Uh, hello guys, uh, good day. So welcome to our uh, learning, learning session 2 of our project construction and management uh, subject. Uh, we are now on decision making guys. So in project construction and management, this is very important. So this is where uh, big companies today uh, able to, to grow uh, on what they are now. So, in right decision, they continues to grow. So, that is why in project construction and management, it is very important that we have, let us say, a process in which uh, we, we get the right decision in our, in, our, in our projects or in our activities related to construction. Okay? So... In our learning session 2, to this one for introduction. Okay, so decision making is the fundamental process of management. Okay, so so this is where we we get our accomplishment, guys. If we if we get the right the uh, right decision, so we have a good uh, process uh, in management. Then most of efforts of managers are related to this process. Okay, so uh, we all know that managers make the decisions for the uh, company or for the institution or organization. So that is why uh, managers are very important and it is uh, good that they are well equipped in their experience so that they can make good uh, decisions. Then who make decisions okay so as i've said it is the executive or the managers okay so they are the one who make the decisions or the or the road of the company okay then effective decisions Okay, so first is, uh, what is a decision? Okay, so decision is a judgment. Okay, so this is where we, we realize what is right and wrong, right? So that is why in project construction and management, this is, it is very important the, the one who makes the decision is uh, the person who is knowledgeable. If not, so maybe he can he can ask the suggestion of the others. Okay, so that is why uh, it's good that if your decision maker is a good listener also. Okay, so effective decisions is a choice between alternatives. Okay, so if you are in a management let us say position. It is good that you write, okay, example, option 1, option 2, and so on, so that you can choose the right options for the activity. Okay? Decision with facts, hypothesis, and tested against reality. Okay? So, meaning in experience. Okay? So, this is very important in the study of engineering. So, we need the facts, okay? Then, hypothesis and experience or let us say experiments, okay? So, since we are studying engineering, so this, this is very uh, important. Okay, so effective managers encourages opinions, okay? So, this is what I've said a while ago that uh, managers, good managers are good uh, listeners, okay? So they encourage opinions of of uh, of their subordinates so that they can apply that one to their decisions. Okay, so because uh, there are subordinates that is more knowledgeable on the activities. Okay. Okay, so effective managers also are expected to make effective decisions. Okay. 
since they are the one entitled and trusted to make decisions so that is why they are expected they are expected to make uh, effective decisions okay so does not make a great many decisions but rather concentrates on the important ones so that is why we need to write options so that we can identify what are the advantages and disadvantages of these options then uh, know that if that a decision must be based on principle okay then should know that uh, should know the intricate decisions is that between the right and wrong insist on alternatives okay so this is more uh, managers always do so they will not accept one uh, alternative so they always ask for another okay so that is why you it is good you write you write options in every activities or uh, decis decision you are planning to make okay 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 decision process okay so made through a systematic process defining clearly the elements in a district sequence by steps Okay, so there, the, these are the steps that is uh, defined as the systematic process for decision. Okay, so number one is we have to identify the problem. Okay, so how can how can we solve the problem if uh, we do not know the problem? So that is why we need to identify the uh, problem. Number two. Specify objectives and the decision criteria. Okay, so number three, develop alternatives. Okay, so maybe you can write options for this uh, for this item. Then analyze and compare alternatives. Okay, so this is where you compare your advantages and disadvantages you wrote in your options. Okay. Then select the best alternative. So based on your analysis, so you have to select the best alternative. So it depends on your uh, judgment for this uh, one for this uh, option. Okay, so number six, implement the chosen alternative. Okay, so we have to implement. Then number seven, monitor results to ensure the desired results are achieved. Okay, so we have to monitor as engineer. This is one of our uh, main work. So we have to monitor our people or and our activities. Okay, so the decision maker must identify the criteria by which proposed solution will be judged. Okay, so these are the, the criteria. Number one, we have the capital. So this is very important in a business. Uh, in a uh, business, so capital. Number two, the time. Three is the profits. Four is maintenance. Five, return of investment or ROI. Okay. So increase in cost. Okay. Seven, risk. Okay, but risk, guys, can be uh, minimized. If you prepare a, it as a risk, uh, risk management uh, system. Okay. So this is the system where we you identify the risk and its corresponding uh, uh, solutions to minimize this risk. Okay. Okay. So we have now the reasons for poor decisions. Okay. So this is work. This is very important if you are a manager or supervisor. 
that you cannot afford to have a poor decisions. Okay? So, number one, we have errors made in the decision process. Okay, so in the first step, if you made an error in a first decision process, so this is a problem. Okay. Number two, manager's ego can be a factor. Okay, so this one also, because in every decisions there are managers that, uh, let us say, uh, in in a while ago, they always they always did right decisions and. Uh, in their minds, they are always correct. Okay, so that is why they, they will not accept uh, ideas from others, especially from their soberness. So this is one of the factor of for decisions. Okay, so managers, managers, ego. Okay, usually happens after a, peri a period that has experienced a series of successes. Okay, so this is what I've said. So number two is bounded rationality. Okay, so it has control on making, a uh, limit as control on making decisions because of cost, human abilities, time, technology, and the ability, availability of information. Okay, so usually this uh, bounded rationality is happens if the company is small, uh, then you have limit on these uh, items. Okay. So sub optimization result from each different department's attempt to reaching a solution that is optimum. Okay, so this is where uh, our uh, decision making. Uh, process is very important because there are decisions that is not applica uh, applicable to organization and to the whole company. So that is why we need to to study our every decision so that we can identify if uh, this decision can help either the department of your company or the whole company. Okay. Then we have the five elements of decision process. Okay, so number one, uh, see if the problem was generic and could only be solved through a decision established by a rule or principle. Okay, so you have to identify for this one. Number two, definite, uh, uh, define the specification which the answer to the problem had to satisfy. That is of the boundary of conditions. Okay, so number three, the thinking through what is right. That is the solution which will satisfy the specifications before attention is given to the company, uh, to the compromises, adaptations, and concessions needed to make the decision acceptable. Okay. Okay, so number four, the building into the decision of the action to carry it out. Okay, so number five, the feedback which test the validity and effectiveness of the, of the decision against the total course of events. Okay, so we are now on to the seven, which is budgeting the time. Okay, so we all know that time is the limiting factor. Okay, so if there is no time, we cannot uh, finish a certain job. Okay, even with our assignments. If you are on deadlines, then you did not submit it on time. Then your time is the limiting factor. Then accomplishments is equal to time. Okay. Then time is unique resource, totally perishable and cannot be restored. Okay, so we know that if you ex example yesterday you made uh, you decide something, then you found out uh, lately that the decision is not good, then you cannot uh, let us say play back that one. Okay, so that is why time is a unique resource.
you can uh, totally perishable okay so after the the activity or let us say uh, items yet that you made so that is that is perishable okay so you cannot play back that one then time is absolutely irreplaceable okay so you cannot replace time okay so this is very important so number five a common time waster is excess of meetings Okay, so actually this is true because there are companies that uh, always, always engage in meetings. Okay, so without knowing that there are, in the, in the attendees of the meeting, there are people who are needed on site. Okay, so you are, you are, actually you are not giving their uh, time. Okay, so to have a successful activity because for this uh, excess of meetings okay then okay so i think uh, to the seven will end this uh, part because of our limited time uh, since uh, i decided that uh, for this discussion or learning session, my my maximum time is 20 minutes. So we are now on the 16 minute mark. Okay, so I think this is good and we will continue on the next part. And I hope you will continue to support my channel guys and uh, continue learning. Okay, then thank you.